I bring forward the case of 14-year-old Azrea Kopanens, who died in a horrific death in Lake of the Woods. Uh, she was involved with child welfare. She was involved with police. She was brought to a hospital, walked out of that hospital in the middle of the night, and the body was found two days later. The family is asking for an inquest, um, and I don't want to deal with the individual case, but what was raised in that story, uh, that tragedy, was that she tried to get mental health services, and mental health services were not available. In fact, in Queen's Park today, in calling for the, uh, the inquest, MPP Sarah Campbell said, to be clear, these services don't exist. In our communities that I represent, I hear all the time that people are denied service or they wait so long the young people go to ground and we've lost young people. So, because if we're being told that mental health services simply do not exist in parts of the country, then uh, what else can we expect that these young people are going to fall through the cracks? Mr. Speaker, mental health awareness and improvements matter to me both as a parent and as a parliamentarian. We've been hosting mental health town halls in Dartmouth Coal Harbour and we've produced our first report on youth mental health which I've submitted to the Minister just last week. Now, we know that the Government of Canada is investing $5 billion in targeted mental health care funding over 10 years to the provinces and territories to improve access to mental health services. Can the Minister of Health please update this House on the progress she's making in working with the provinces and territories to ensure this new targeted mental health care spending is most effective? As he indicated, our government has committed $5 billion of new funding to provinces and territories. We know that there are over 500,000 young people in Canada that are on a waiting list to receive access to mental health care and services. That money that we are giving to the provinces and territories is enough to entirely clear that waiting list. This is good news and we will be working with the provinces and territories to deliver a set of metrics and we look forward to seeing better access to mental health care. Okay. So a couple takeaways from that. Number one is all the parties agree that this is an issue that needs to be focused on. Uh, and secondly, they're all wanting to throw money at it, right? <laughs> it's like uh, 51 billion, you know, I shared in the intro, another 5 billion there, uh, Minister Philpott was saying in that moment. And so I wanna ask you though, is, is money the only answer? Or, you know, is there's groups like yours, mm -hmm. right, doing advocacy work. What have you found the strongest solutions are for people who are struggling with mental illness or, or wanting to cultivate mental health? I think both are important. Um, if you compare it to, say, the, the f uh, physical health, um, medical, um, what they're talking about in terms of the young lady and that horrifying story mm -hmm. is really um, a medical emergency. And we need hospitals and we need uh, services in place to be able to facilitate medical emergencies. But we also need preventative measures in place. And that's more where advocacy, advocacy groups like ours comes in and um, really shares keys to help uh, students and, and really people across society live mentally healthy lives because mental health is not simply the absence of mental illness. There's, there's a spectrum of health with mental health, and we want to help people learn how to live at the high end of that spectrum. You don't want to be in crisis management mode. You want to stay healthy. Absolutely. So, okay, so let's talk about your organization, Inspiration Republic. You're mm -hmm. doing amazing work. You're going right into the schools. You're doing, a, from what I understand, a multimedia presentation, yes. drama, uh, speaking. What are the, some of the, the main keys that you give to the students on how to keep their mental health strong? Well, well one, I mean, right, right back to my story is that, the, first, of all there is hope mm. and really we really want to drive home that heart message that mm. well, one of the things that I felt it was I felt alone at times I felt like nobody understood what I was going through I felt like there was no hope for my future at times like could I ever live a normal life and when you're dealing with issues inside your mind that's a reasonable question you know it, and it's also a, a, an, a, an inevitable feeling of um, a feeling of depression, a feeling of hopelessness. And you're, you're not gonna see a brighter tomorrow when you're in the middle of that mental battle. Mm -hmm. And so w one thing that I, I share and really try to embody is the fact that I was there, I was you, and now I'm here speaking to you. So there is hope, there is a brighter day. You can be free. You can be free. That's amazing, that's yeah. amazing. So you, you inspire hope. Hope. Any other things that you So bring? yeah, so we, we, we sort of go through an acronym of hope, of, of actual, the word hope, and we start with get help. Mm. You know, the earlier you get help, the better you'll be able to have your, the, the things that you're dealing with 
serviced properly and be able to get the help you need to be able to, to move ahead and to overcome those issues. O is overcoming stress. So we, we teach some simple ways to learn how to, to manage stress because stress is really a gateway to a lot of mental health issues. Mm. So understanding that there's a stress, uh, a, a, a stress in your body is not necessarily a bad thing in certain circumstances. It's a fight or flight, as we've, uh, most of us have heard. It's the stress response is what your body does when there's a real or perceived threat that it's facing. So are you teaching kids simple tools like breathing deep, exactly. getting good sleep, drinking water, that kind of thing? Yeah, so, so we, I, we, I, I just threw those out there. I don't even know if those are. Well, yeah, funny enough, we actually have something that we share at times called the wellness compass. So if you feel disoriented, if anybody feels disoriented in their physical health or their mental health, right. start with the basics. So just like if you're in the wilderness, you felt disoriented and you didn't have service for, your, for Google Maps, you might go back to this old thing we call a compass. Wow. And so, the compass that we really encourage them if you just feel disoriented in your mental health is north nutrition. Check your nutrition. How's your nutrition doing? Are you eating healthy? Are you getting a, a, a good meals a day? Is, are you high in, in, in processed sugar? You know, those type of things. And really check that area to make sure how am I doing in my, in my nutrition. South, sleep. You know, am I getting a, a, a optimal sleep for my age category to be? Because if you don't, then literally your brain doesn't even get to clean out all the toxins and it's going to affect your mental health and well being. You know, e, e is exercise. And okay, are you getting proper exercise? You know, exercise, it re releases endorphins, you feel good, it helps your self-esteem, it actually releases stress from your body. Getting convicted. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, and then it also helps your sleep, so it plays back in the sleep. Right. And then west is water. Okay. Um, so W is water, and so we say, okay, start start there. Mm -hmm. You know, before you before you um, you know just l lose your mind or s start to worry about your future. Right. Start and orient Your yourself in those in those four areas. Yeah. Okay, we're closing in here. We just got a couple minutes left, but yeah. you know, when I saw those stats about most of this begins in adolescence. Yeah. You know, that means the parents got to be involved, like your mom and dad. And so, to the parent out there. Mm -hmm who maybe has a, a child that is struggling with some form of mental illness, what would, what would your word of encouragement be to parents? I've actually had the opportunity where we, we do parent sessions as well, and I've had parents come up to me, and I remember one case you know, with tears in her eyes, thanking me for sharing my story, and then going on to share some of the struggles she was facing with her child. And one of our biggest messages to parents is, uh, first and foremost, you're, you're probably doing better than you think you are. Mm because a lot of times a, a parents, t you know, they gauge how well they're doing as a parent based on how well their child's doing. And sometimes mental health issues have nothing to do with your parenting skills. Right. In, in, my, in the case of my parents, my parents were great parents, but I had this mental health issue despite their great parenting. Wow. And so first, you're doing better than you think you are. And secondly, don't be afraid to reach out for help. Mm -hmm. There's great services that are coming up. Uh, we've come a long way as a nation in terms of understanding not to just go straight to medication. A lot of st stigma has been broken off. Mm -hmm. And there are resources that can actually, and a lot of studies that show that the earlier you address an issue, mm -hmm. the better you're able to manage it. Of overcome. course. Wow, profound. Mm -hmm. Oh, you packed a lot in there, Tom. <laughs> so if people want to find out more about the good work that you're doing with Inspiration Republic, what's the website? www.inspirationrepublic.org. Okay, wow. Well, I just want to address the camera here for a second and, and just encourage you, you know, we need to be doing the basics, we need to be taking care of our bodies, but we also need to be taking care of our souls and our spirits. You know, I actually struggled with an eating disorder, uh, anorexia and bulimia, and uh, all the things that Joel mentioned, uh, you know, they were game changers, but it was when I met Jesus, it was when I encountered Jesus and his love for me that the game changed. And so uh, let's take care of ourselves, body, soul, mind and spirit. So come on, Canada, we can do this. Let's have strong mental health. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me.